everyone out there in Watchland. This is JD. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll be notified when there's a new video. And if you want me to do some watch service, then you can forget it until next year. I'm telling you, you got to forget it until next year, unless you get some really compelling argument for me to repair your pocket watch. And if you do, then write me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Um, I'm almost clear. I've almost cleared off the bench. Um, I just figured I'd chat about some stuff today and um, away we go. So first thing I want to chat about is not this tool, which I want to do chat about in a second, but I want to chat about this pocket watch. So this is a very beautiful Waltham pocket watch I've repaired. I replaced the uh, crystal on the top. I had these, uh, you see them online, they're these, there's the glass crystals, are, they're flat. Um, this actually fit nicely and I glued it in and it's nicely glued in. As you can see with this pocket watch, the amplitude on this thing is really good. It's running like crazy, running really well. The problem I have with this thing is it'll run all night like this. I turned this around the other way. It's still running and I wound it up about an hour ago and I turned it around the other way and after an hour or so it just decides to stop. Then I turn it around again and I use my finger and I kind of give it a kick start and it sort of sluggishly goes oh, I don't know I don't know and then all of a sudden it starts again. So I went on watchrepairtalk.com to uh, see if uh, the guys there could help me at all because I'm kind of confused here. Um, I'm finished working on this watch. I made the video a while back on how to shim properly, how to use watch paper to shim and there was a lot of um, appreciation on that video. A lot of people commented and said thanks a lot man. That's a good way to do it um, as opposed to turning the balance the balance cock over and then and then jamming it or basically marring it or whatever with a uh, with some piece of metal to raise the metal up. Anyway, whatever you call that. Peening or someone corrected me the other day and said it's not peening. You idiot. It's something else. So anyway, that's this is the Waltham watch. It's uh, working really well right now and I'm just waiting for it to stop again. This is what's going to happen to this thing. And then I'm going to say, okay, I got to investigate, figure out why this thing is stopping. If you have any idea why this thing would be stopping, then you let me know, okay? I just put my cloth over there for a second. So this one is peeving me off. I'll keep it nice and clean. So this is a, a set. So I actually also worked on this, um, this watch here, which is an Illinois uh, pocket watch. And this, this baby here is old. It's old. It's old, Jerry. So it's a key wound watch. Um, and there it is there. And I got this running really well. So I had to actually file the, the key or file the mainspring, uh, whatever you want to call that, pivot or whatever. It's supposed to be square and it's used for winding up the mainspring. Um, and I had to file that to make it more square because it wasn't square enough. But I'm going to give that back to the owner. And actually, if you hold the key and move the watch, it's a better way of winding it. So you can put a lot of pressure on it. So this will be returned. And I also did some work on the case. Every time I touch something, I leave fingerprints. I don't know why. So this is why. <laughs> those CSI guys are able to catch the bad guys because they're always leaving fingerprints anyway. So I did some work on the back of this. So it's in beautiful condition as well. Um, and did I put a new crystal on this? I might have. Might have. Might. I think I did. Anyway, I can't remember. So those are the two watches. This one is ticking away. I'm curious whether it'll keep ticking and I get home tonight and it'll tick again. So going to a friend's house to watch the game. See if Tiger Woods can still swing. I know he's like 20 strokes behind or something right now, which is not good. So the other thing is, <coughs> I learned something recently. So I had a balance staff. I'm going to draw a picture. Draw roar. I know how much you you guys love to watch me draw, right? I just know it. So I'm going to draw a picture, and i got to find my drawing picture device. My DPD drawing picture device. Where is it? Oh, yeah, it's called... Call, you're gonna. I'm gonna basically screw up my green screen here by going back here. Oh, and reaching, reaching, screwing up my green screen. I'm reaching way over here into the. I could put anything back here. I could put dinosaurs running after me. I could do anything I want here. So, so there's my screwed up green screen. And let's see. Do I have a piece of paper? Here I do. I got a piece of paper. So here's what happened. <clears throat> I got this uh, new balance staff, right? 
So this is this is kind of what a balanced staff looks like. You're going to look at the top of my head while I draw this picture because I can't draw and do this at the same time. But I figured I'd keep me in view this morning. So, so there's the balanced staff. There's the pivot on top. And then there's the staff as it fattens out like that. And then there's a hairspring that goes around here like this. Boopy doopy doo. And then there's the balance itself that's attached here. And when you attach the balance, it almost looks like it's upside down because it's thick. It's thick. The arms are on the bottom part of this. The arms are on the bottom part of that, right? And then there's the, and I'm going to exaggerate this. Then there's the roller table that has to go on here. And the roller table goes on. This is this was a single roller like that. And then the jewel, the impulse jewel is like this. And then there's a pivot on the bottom like that. And there's the balance basically, right? So my challenge here, first first of all, um, the balance staff, I think it was the right balance staff. I got it from, go, go get your parts from daveswatchparts.com. Dave's a good guy. If you're looking for watch parts, you just email him. Go to his website at daveswatchparts.com. It's a plug for Dave. Um, he's a great guy. So make sure you measure your old balance staff, its dimensions, its length, its its width, all the different dimensions of the balance staff. He needs to know how long it is. He needs to know how wide it is. Anyway, the balance staff I received was the right one, but it was ever so slightly small. So when I put the balance on, in fact, I had to rivet the balance in place, but, but uh, it worked. There was no issue. Um, I put the hairspring on the collet was actually too uh, wide. So I, I have a tool to narrow the collet. So I narrowed the collet. It worried me a bit because I was worried about cracking the collet. And it kind of pinged out of the collet crimping device I have, um, which is really expensive. So it pinged out, but it didn't, it, it, it did crimp it enough to be able to narrow the collet. But then when I got this baby here, the roller table, it looks, it looked so close to fitting. Right, and, and then I started reading about. It. I decided not to fart around because I heard you pound it with a with a uh, a steak, and it might work. Right, so you do some steak pounding, and it might work. There, you turn your video on and off, and you get magic tricks. Magic trick number one. Where did it go? <laughs> anyway, total stupidity. So, so the the. Uh, the roller table was too, the hole was too big for the for the for the uh, bounce staff. So I thought, okay, do I how do I increase the the diameter of a bounce staff? No can do, folks. Then I thought, well, how do I decrease the hole size of this? And I thought, well, I know how to decrease the hole size of a, of a part made of copper, brass, or copper. And you just use a round a rounded stake, so the stake's rounded on the bottom, and then you pound on it. So the so rounded stake is just uh, slightly bigger than the hole, and you pound bam, 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 like that, and then that'll increase the hole size. And I thought, well, I've cracked a, ba a roller table before, right? And it's not fun. You crack a roller table, you got to buy a no, maybe even a new movement. I've done that before uh, to replace that roller table. Uh, so I did not want to crack the roller table. So I got all of my books, all the books that you see behind me. Practical Watch Repair, right there, is a very good book. Right there, Practical Watch Repair by DeCarl. Cool book, that one there. That one's a great book. And then the Watch Repairs Manual. These two books are number one. And then there's Bench Practices for Watchmakers, which is somewhere behind me. Well, there's a Watch Repairs Manual, which is kind of like pop Practical Watch Repair. So that's really good too. And then there's another one. I think it's right, I'm going to moving around here right there. I think that's bench practices for watch repairs and that's got some very specific stuff in there but I got lots of books on how to repair watches. Lots. So I decided to start re researching. Oh and over on that side there I've got the Bull of a School of Watchmaking uh, books and then I've got the Chicago School of Watchmaking books as well. So I went and looked in all those books and no one could tell me what to do to make the size of this thing smaller. Then I I went on the tube of you that you're looking at right now, and I thought, there's got to be someone out there that's done this that can show me. So certainly I, I just started researching, and then I found this dude who was a watchmaker. But before I found the dude who was a watchmaker, I read that in one of the books, 
not to fart with the dimensions of the hole on a roller table. Do not play with that, they were saying. So then I was thinking, maybe I'll use glue. And so I've got my JB Weld glue out, and I'll put some JB Weld on that and then squish it in. I thought, dang, good watchmaking technique. That sucks. That's stupid, stupid to do that. No one will ever have any respect for me again if I use JB Weld. Um, then I then I thought, well, maybe I'll just use, like, there's more, there's glues these days that are, like, super glue. Maybe I'll super glue the thing on and stick it to my finger and then touch my nose. And all of a sudden I've got a uh, balance staff uh, with a roller table stuck to my nose. Maybe I'll try that, right? So, didn't do it. I chickened out again. Then I went on the tube of you, and I thought, oh, maybe there's some dude who's done this. And I found this guy, and he had, he used a special type of steak to do that, and not the kind that my wife has been eating a lot of these days. She's on the, the carnivore diet. Um, uh, it's a super, super good diet, but you really got to watch out because that diet can cause all kinds of family issues. If, you, if you're eating too close to your wife and she's on the carnivore diet, you could be in big trouble. Big trouble. I was just kidding. <laughs> so it turned out there was a steak that you can use to reduce the whole size of the roller table. I know. I know. Shut up. This is impossible. So let me draw another picture. So there's the roller. Oops, there's a roller. Do you remember, guys remember Mr. Dress Up? So Mr. Dress Up was a, a character. He had, he had uh, Finnegan and his dog and, and this other dude. Anyway, um, and it was a kid's show. So when you were a kid and you were sick, you were sick usually for two days. You had the flu. And then the third day, if you had the flu on a Tuesday and you were sick Tuesday and Wednesday, well, on Thursday, you were like, yeah, I think I'm still sick. Even though you weren't sick, you told your mom. Your dad didn't really care because he let mom take care of it, right? But you told your mom that you were still sick. And then you laid in bed and, oh, oh you moaned a bit, right? And then the second, the second your mom was busy doing something, you went into the playroom or wherever, turned your TV on, and you watched Mr. Dress Up. And he made all kinds of cool stuff. Like he made boats out of cardboard milk containers. And if you're old enough, you remember that, okay? I'm just sharing stuff with you that is absolutely useless. It will not help you one bit in your life. But but listen on. So anyway, he did that, and then he. Uh, he made all, he used to cut things out. He made stuff out of paper. It was really interesting. This was way before the internet. The internet wasn't even around back. Electrons were barely new. Like electrons were, ne were not even spinning at the time, right? So there was no minus 6.23 times 10 to the negative 23 was not in existence. So they didn't even have the square root back then, okay? All they had was the root. No one knew what to do with it. Someone decided to make it square. It was amazing. So there's the roller table. Talk about it. Oh, and by the way, it's loose collar day today. This is when you buy these t-shirts for 10 bucks. And then you realize after about, about a year, <laughs> they're worth about 10 bucks, maybe five, because <laughs> the collars are always loose. So every I always have loose collar day. And remind me later, I got to do a watch check because I'm wearing a really cool watch right now. Look at this. Gold, Jerry. It's gold. Anyway, so basically, basically, I hate that word. Anyway, what you do is you take the stake that looks like a pyramid. It's like a triangle. And, you're, and when you punch down on this, it makes a groove here, a groove here, and a groove here. Like that. And what that does is that moves this material inward like that and moves this material on both sides inward like that, which there, which, which shrinks the diameter of this hole. It's amazing. So this is the stake. I'm going to try to focus on this with my fingers. I know that when you do your finger focus, your skin looks like terrible. So that's the stake right there as I'm looking at it too on my screen. What a stake. It's in every staking set. I never knew what this thing was for. So it's pointed, it's got three sides, but it's but it 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 peaks basically. So it's 
it's like a star, a three-sided star. And you just turn that around and you fit it into the hole, right like that. And then you punch down on that and you tap, don't tap too hard because this actually cuts into the metal a bit. It actually leaves a line in the metal. And so you tap down on it. And then what I did, because this dude on the internet, on the YouTubeness of tubeness, t said that he likes to rotate it. So you have this and then you rotate it eh, like that, 30 degrees or whatever that rotation would be. 60 degrees? Anyway, whatever. And then it, and it does three more lines. So if you rotate it like that, 60 degrees, I think, if I do the math right, then you end up with three more lines, and then it pushes the the uh, the metal um, on the sides of where those lines are inward again. And you only have to do it on one side. And what I did, these roller tables are, are finicky. So if you look at a roller table sideways, and you look at this hole, and I just, I'm going to draw the hole in, in crazy big, right? So you look at the hole, and the hole is actually sloped a bit like that, and then it goes off to Never Never Land, like that. I think my marker sucks. And the hole actually has comes up like this, and then there's a little bit of, the one I had anyway, there's a little bit of metal on the sides like that. So, so I punched it, maybe it's not so drastic, but I punched it on this side. So my star punch went down and punched it here. Uh, actually, the star punch would be like that, and then like this. And I punched it here and here, because if I punched it there, it wouldn't make any sense, right? So there, check the roller table. If there's a more, if the roller table isn't completely squared off like this, which I thought it was, but it's not, um, it's got a thinner piece on one side, and then punch it on this side. And that, that uh, in effect, closes the hole. And then once you've closed the hole, and you really don't need to close it that much if you've got a near fit, right? Once you've closed that hole on there, and then you use your normal punches to punch that roller table back on. Let's see, where's my drawing? That's an amazing drawing. Punch that roller table back on to the uh, onto the watch, onto the balance staff, right? So that's how you do it. So I did that, and I decreased the size of that hole, and it snugged up nicely, no problem at all. As a matter of fact, when I pounded down on that, I should have pounded less because when I pounded the uh, the roller table back on, and there's books on how to do that, so I'm not going to tell you to do that right now. Um, the roller table was actually sitting on the top. That's how small the hole got. It just sat there on the top, and I actually had to pound it all the way down. I was a bit nervous about maybe it cracking or something like that, but it didn't. So I probably hit it a little bit too hard with the, with the stake. So make sure, go into your staking set, find this stake, right, in your set, I actually couldn't see the stake in my, I've got a couple sets, but I couldn't see the stake in the set I normally use. So I went to my high-end set. This is my high-end set, somewhere that way, that way. Anyway, and I got it out. I found this this uh, specific stake very early uh, just by looking down and going, there it is. So and I took it out. Then I looked at my old staking set, and sure enough, it was there. So that's some tips, because I wanted to give you some tips today, because... Uh, I had to do a lot of research on this one. I did not want to ruin that roller table. So it works. And as you can see, that watch, the watch I showed you a few seconds ago from Barry, I believe his name is, is ticking away. So if you're watching Mr. Barry, let me see if, let me check that name to make sure it's the right guy. I take up my phone. I got a phone. Is it Barry? I think it is. Let me check. This is like, if you had a good editing software, you'd probably not show this, right? I probably wouldn't show you me looking at whether it's the right guy let me think barry it is barry well bury me down captain bury me down so barry if you look at that you'll see it's running perfectly and it's running in face-up condition and the the uh the crystal is really nice on there so i put a crystal on there uh did you do really nice uh didn't bother shining up this watch because some of these watches look much better in vintage condition so and i took the back and closed it up and as you can see the watch is ticking away like a like a postal worker on a friday afternoon it's a shitty analogy anyway so there it is ticking away like crazy the balance is working like crazy if you can look at that balance swinging it's perfectly round perfectly round 
And even if I put it sideways like that and you look at that, look at that thing. It's beautiful. And this is the one I shimmy shim shimmed, right? Shim shimmity, shim shimmity, shim shim shireen. And if you look over here, you can see the shim, shim shimmity, shim shimmity. Now, Dave, if you're watching me right now, I played guitar this morning with my new Spark amp for almost two hours. And then I played it yesterday morning for two hours. The only way to get good at playing is to play. That's for Dave if he's watching. So, and if he's not watching, if he watches this for three minutes when I'm not watching this shit anymore, then forget it. So, and actually the Spark amp, you should get a plug for the Spark amp. I'm an old rock guitar player. Um, I play a little classical too and a bunch of other crap. And really that Spark amp is amazing. You connect with your Bluetooth, you pick up some background music and you play away and it is amazing. So I bought the Spark amp about uh, three months ago from another guy named Ken, if he's watching, and Ken said, you got to buy this. I was like, great, another amp. So now I have another amp, a Spark amp. So so back to watchmaking, because people out here that are watching my channel are, do, don't give a rat's derriere about, about that, a boot. So I'm putting this back into my staking set right now, that stake, and then closing the door. And I've got a CE Marshall Company staking set that I got years ago that I use all the time. Anyway, so I've made a ton of wa movies, or movies, I guess they are movies, videos on jeweling. So, so a, a jeweling set like this, more magic. <laughs> a jeweling set like, I saw this on the interweb, on the, in the interweb, I had one of the first web pages in Canada, by the way. Fly and the Fling, it was called. Anyway, back in the early 90s, the interweb, I knew this was going to be, I learned how to code in HTML. What a nerd. Oh my God. The, the women, well, women were running in, op in the opposite direction, but I was married at the time, so they were running anyway. So. so this I found on the internet. I'm going off on all kinds of tangents to make this super interesting. So this is a H. Mr. Anderson jeweling cutter. So what is a jeweling cutter, you ask? What is a jeweling cutter? you got to watch, uh, what's his name? The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, a really old movie with Don Knotts. And he talks about being a hero. you got to just Google Don Knotts hero speech. And I'm telling you, it's the funniest. What is a hero? Who are heroes? Let me clarify. Thank you. Anyway, you got to Google that speech because it's funny as hell. So in other videos I've made, um, I showed you how to cut uh, a jewel setting. So and so if you look in my videos, you'll see a videos on how to cut a jewel setting, right? So out of brass. So you take a piece of brass and you cut the jewel setting. I got a piece of brass right here, but this has already been sharpened for some reason. The back end of it, you flatten. And then what I did in the previous vi video is I drilled a hole the perfect size and then after I drilled the hole the perfect size and kind of rounded it on the inside I had to hit kit, cut that little canal and that little canal has the metal that that burnishes 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 over the jewel itself once you put the jewel in place so go look for my video on how to make a jewel setting I made some pretty beautiful little jewel settings that uh, worked like a charm a charm and I found this on the internet I was like what the hell is this right I should say, heck, keep my videos at G rating. So what the heck hell is this? So it has a, a plate on the inside, right? And that plate on the inside, these are, these are templates for jewel settings. So if you look at this thing, these are various jewel settings and what the template would be, including the hole size. And this is what I've figured out. So these little jobby do hickey thingamajiggies, and that's for Mr. Ed, I won't use his last name, but his initial is H. So Ed H. Jobby do thingamajobby do hickeys. These are jewel setting cutters. And if you look at one of these things, there's I'll, I'll pick one that's in decent condition. They're all pretty good actually. Pull one of these things out, and this is what it looks like. It looks like about a size 50 collet that's going to have to be on this thing. The thing, 
And what it looks like up close, i just get an old piece of white paper here, or maybe the yellow pad that I had before, because I probably can use that as a backing. And there's the, uh, if you look at this up close, see if I can show you that up close. There it is. So you see the pointy part of this right there. That's where the hole would be dug, right? And then on the edge of the castle, right, you see two parts here and here. And this can this is for cutting the metal. Um, so you're digging the hole first and you're cutting it down only to a certain point, right? Because this is the hole where the pivot would go through. And then, the, then this is the bigger, the larger hole that would show the jewel after... You know, you'd look at it and you'd see there's my my setting with the jewel fitting perfectly down in, in there. So the, the jewel would sit on on what the what you've cut out, the cup you've cut out, and that's the hole for the cup. And then the cool part here is this little thing of a jobby doohickey right here, that right there. That cuts the moat around the jewel. So that actually and as you can see by this thing, it only cuts in one direction. So it's sloped. So these things here, right can I show this up close? Let me see how close I can get. There it is there. That right there is the slope. So this only cuts in the opposite direction that you, as you're looking at it. So it cuts this way, like that. Right? Because that's how you would cut it with a graver. So this thing of Majabi doohickey would fit in your tailpiece. And then you just move your tailpiece towards the, the brass. Grab that brass. Grab that brass. Sounds like a song. Grab that brass. This would move towards your brass like that, and it would cut the perfect setting, right? So that's what these are, setting cutters. Um, their goal, Jerry, to find a set of setting cutters like this, because I found another one that I showed you before that was a universal cutter. And so what you do here is once you put your old jewel setting in there, and you find out which where it fits, you take the setting cutter, and you put it inside these holes here, and you can see from the setting cutter, and I'll just show it here, where that this, the outer cutter is, that one that makes the, uh, the moat, I'll call it, to burnish over your jewel. You just line that up with the right one here, and that's the right cutter you need to use, right? So, so you, you'd put your jewel setting in there, and then you'd figure, oh, it's a four, and then you go through your various cutters here until you find the right one. I've looked on these cutters, I've looked on these cutters, See the way you accent words here? I've looked on these cutters for numbers, and I cannot find numbers that can that that align to this here, the numbers here, because there's like numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, and this goes in this goes in sideways like that. And then I looked on the bottom. Maybe the number's on the bottom. Is that a number there? I don't think so. That says D. Does that say D? D. My cuticles need work, man. I need to go to the, uh, I need to go to the cuticle repair person. Let me look at the bottom of this one here and see if I've discovered the truth behind these cutters. What does this say? Hey, maybe there's a number here. This number says, this number says, what does that number say? I think there might be numbers in the bottom of the cutters. I think that says 13. Oh my God, a, re a revelation. There are numbers on the bottom of the cut. I never looked at the cutters this way before. But that would be a smart place to put them because the numbers won't go away. Let me get my ugly fingers up here and look at this one. That is a 3. Yeah, that's a 3. So I can line the 3 up with the 3 on the plate. Oh my God. Oh my God. I hope you're watching Netflix right now and not me, okay? So so there's a there should be a three on this plate here somewhere. If I look at this look and see on the platen and I see one, two, three, right. I'm using my camera to look at this thing, eh? So if I look at the three and then I just throw this cutter in the hole, that the rim on the side should fit and it does. Look at that. The rim on the side fits with the cutter. Oh my God. So that's a three. So you throw your jewel in here. You pick your, find out what number it is. Go in here. Find, and I'm going to organize this. See, so they're all numbered in, in the right order. 
then you find the right cutter and away you go. You can put cut the perfect jewel setting. So what I need to do is make another video on actually how to uh, to do that. So another point before I go away, I have to clear my voice. My voice has been officially cleared <coughs> like this. <coughs> if you watch Little Britain, if you're a Little Britain fan. <coughs> so here, as you can see, there's a hinge here on this box in the box. That's American for box. Hinge on the box. And that hinge is like a cloth hinge. When I got this tool, this was all loose here. This was loose here. And then I lifted this up and this was not attached. So when I close the box like that, the box, this, I could pull this apart without a problem. Right now it's in pretty good shape. You can still pull it apart probably if you heft away at it, but it's in really good shape. So what I did, and I'm gonna show you the glue I used. This is the glue. So this is another plug for the GS people that are in the US. They're in the Northern US, somewhere in Minnesota or something, I think. But anyway, the GS company has been around for a long time. Look them up on the internet. They're a company that made crystals, GS crystals. And I have a GS crystal press that's in really high quality, I think. Very well made. Well, this GS glue, I had to put a patch in it because it's an old one, right? So I put a patch on it because it bursted out the side because of a bend. But this GS glue has an applicator. So when you pull this puppy dog out, and I, I don't want to pull it all the way out, but when you pull this all the way out, it has a needle on the end like that. And that needle is angled and you can put the glue on really nicely. So I've used this, it's, they say it's hobby cement, jewelry, watch crystals, hobbies, all that kind of stuff. It's just really good glue. This stuff is excellent and it doesn't sit right away. So you can, what you do is you apply it and then you wait a couple of centons. That's a Klingon time maybe. You wait, a, you wait a few minutes and then you apply, you put that down, right? So when I, when I fix the crystal on this watch that is still running, I'm waiting for this thing to stop on me so I can figure out how to not make it stop. I went all around the edge. And so what you do is you hold the applicator steady as you move the watch around. Okay. When you're applying the glue, don't try to take your hand and move your hand around to put the glue on. That is really a bad way of doing it because you're losing your precision. So you have the slope going that way. Slope is in sort of this direction. So when you're, you're putting it on, you're kind of scraping it on, right? So this glue comes out pretty fast if you squeeze on that tube. So don't squeeze on it. And you just do this and rotate this, the watch as you're doing it. Uh, I recommend uh, putting, after you're finished putting the glue on, right? And you've got your watch paper right that I've talked about before uh, you actually you can take the this part here the needle part and you clean that up with your watch paper and then you stick the the pin on the inside the pin goes into the hole of that needle and then you stick it in a bit and then you take your watch paper you very quickly clean the leftovers after that pin is in the hole and then close the thing down and then your then that glue will last a long time it won't just solidify on the on the tip so so that's how you do that this today's video is so full of tips it's sickening right so that's that um and one more status update this is a status update for andy who i know is watching right now hopefully so i got a crystal for his pocket watch and it is too small so i don't know how the heck that happened but his pocket watch is done with the exception of the crystal so and as you can see, Andy out there in Andy land, the crystal just fell off. So I got a brand new crystal and I measured it properly and everything. And I went to Somal, Canada, because I live in Canada. And they sent me the crystal. It was the right kind of flatness. The domeness was perfect for this because it would close nicely on here on the lid. And as you can see, the watch is ticking away. Pud problem. It's running really well, actually, in all positions. Um, and the problem here was, was the crystal was actually too small, but I had already ordered one from the UK. So, so don't worry, Andy, I won't charge you for the extra crystal. It cost me 18 bucks and then all sorts of pain in the ass included. So, so I'll, I'm not sure how much the UK one it came in. It was in pounds, man, pounds. So I'm going to get the UK one and see if that's 
going to work. And if that doesn't work, because it's a little bit bigger than this one, it was a 40.4. This is a 40.4 millimeters. The UK one was a 40.6 millimeters. Um, but when I looked at this one here, it looked, when I you snap this rim down on this pocket watch, it looks wider on one side than on the other side, which is total pain in the butt. It's not round. Wonderful. So that's a little update for Andy. So his his uh, the bezel here is not perfectly round, and that's snapped down nicely. Um, but the good news, so if we can't end up getting a crystal on this someday, because it's not round, not sure what we'll do, but but uh, I'm saying we because I've got the watch right now. But I got it working nicely. I've got this working nicely. And you can also set the time. And this is for Andy. When you go to set the time on this watch, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to go to a different screen here. There, I intentionally have this watch upside down because this is the way I do watch work, okay? So I'll close the lid on this watch, right, like that. Close it like that. And then when I go to set the time on this watch, I take my hand here and I hold it over the watch. So it's in this, con this position, like that. So I have, and I, and I grab the crown like this. This is for Andy, okay? So Andy, you better be watching this or I'm going to give you shit for this, okay? Hold the, hold the crown like this. And I do this for all pocket watches because it gives you more control than grabbing and pulling. That does not work. So hold the crown like that and then hold the watch movement like this on the side, okay? This is not a magic trick, folks. So you do that and then I push the watch movement away from the crown. So right now it's in the winding position, as you can hear. You can hear that winding, right? And now I got to put it in the setting position. This watch was touchy as heck. So when I push it, I push very carefully until it clicks into the setting position, right? So just eep, there. I heard the click. Stop pushing because this 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 will come right out. There was fine tuning that went on here, right? So that in this condition I can set the watch, but stupid me, you got to open the lid first, right? Before you can prove that. So you can do it like that. Leave the lid open and loose when you do this. Move it out into the setting position. And if it doesn't crack right away, just move the, the crown a bit. And as you can see, now I can set the watch, right? So right now it is the 1138, 1138, like that. Then push that baby back and then close the lid like this, right? Now the tricky part here on this watch, and this is for Andy again, okay? That, and I just put my thumb under here because I never, I didn't close the lid down yet. So there's a watch ticking away nicely. This little screw here is the one that holds the uh, the crown and stem in place. This little screw. If you tighten this too much, it won't work. It won't turn. If you tighten it too little, then the stem, the the crown and stem just come right out. So it's touchy as hell. So I found out the exact place to tighten this, right? Uh, position to tighten it, and I did that, and now it's nicely tightened, and it's in place, and it's working really well. So, so this is your watch, Andy. So we'll. Find that friggin' crystal for it. Hopefully that'll come next week from the UK and we'll try to fit that and see what happens. Um, there may be the situation where no crystal will work because as I looked at that other crystal, this one here, sitting on top nicely, it's just sitting there right now. It does sit there. Um, I don't want to glue this in place, although I'm tempted to. But I know damn well that this thing is, the diameter is wider this way than this way. And I don't know why because it shouldn't be like that. But anyway, your watch is done and in beautiful condition and working really well. <clears throat> and I do a lot of work, work on that balance and had some fun. Anyway, there you go. Let me close this down and go back to my other scene. All right, I'm back. I'm back. So it is Sunday morning right now. And I'm going to go to my buddy's house and we're going to do some golfing and watching of golf. So thank you very much again for watching this video. If you like these little chat-a-thons, let me know, and I'll make more videos with tips on where do you buy this from do, 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 for holding balances. How do you make one of these do, 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 for doing balance work and putting your balance cock on that? What the heck is this? Dun, dun, dun. And how do I use it? And who buys jewels from India in packs of a billion dun, 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 that you'll never use because it looks like they're good, but they're not. Dun, dun, dun. 
And when will I ever put this Italian watch strap onto an Italian watch? When will that happen? It's blue on the bottom too. So, oh yeah, sorry. Dun, dun, dun. And how do I buy the Myers number 58 movement holder? How do I get one of these babies? Because this is the world's best movement holder. I've said it a million times. It is so good. It's sickening. This movement holder just makes me want to want to weep. That's how good this movement holder is. Anyway, that's it for uh, my uh, chatty McChatty pants. My buddy calls me whiny McWhiny pants when I'm on the golf course and I make a mistake. But I usually have good temperament. You can tell the person's personality by how they react after they hit the top of a golf ball when they're shooting for an eagle on a par five. Do they throw their club into the woods? Do they s smash your club down into the grass? Do they look over at you and smile and go, I meant to do that. So you can tell a lot about someone's personality. So I'm the third guy. I don't take fits on the golf course. It's not professional. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching my uh, channel and my gajillion videos. Um, and I'll likely not make another video today, but I've got some more watch work to do uh, in the future. So thanks a lot. And um, so this was... This was the amazing pocket watch that uh, I was working on before, and now it's gone. Thanks for watching my channel, and I'll catch you next time.